Good morning. It's my pleasure to present you the new report on the drug situation in Europe. And it's a privilege to present it to you with Mrs. Silva Johansson, the European Commissioner for Home Affairs, and with Mrs. Laura Darigo, who's the chair of the management board of EMCDDA. We will present you today uh, the key findings resulting from all the data collected up to 2020, including all statistical data collected until end of last year, and more recent data coming from rapid studies that we have launched to follow and assess the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. I'm going to present you three main findings. Let's have a look at COVID-19 pandemic impact. There are three main impacts of the pandemic on the drug situation in Europe this year. Services have been severely disrupted in the beginning of the pandemic and in the first weeks and months of the lockdown, resulting in the closure of very important reduction in the availability of treatment and harm reduction services and lack of access of the practitioners to protective equipment. Luckily, it has been followed by a much more positive movement where we have seen a lot of innovation and creativity from all services, developing more e-health or m-health activities or applications, developing more telemedicine and installing new partnership with the client. Second impact about drug use. First, some reduction in the substances that are usually used in recreational settings, such as cocaine or ecstasy, also called MDMA. For other groups of substances, we have seen an increase. It's uh, namely the case for the use of cannabis, of the use of benzodiazepines, and the use of alcohol frequently in combination with one or other of the other substances that I have mentioned. For a third group of substances, the picture is not so clear. It's about other stimulants and amphetamines where the decrease was not as important that we expected. Third, the impact of COVID-19 on organized crime. Organized crime groups have been extremely resilient. And we can say that the pandemic has boosted not only the digital transformation for the licit economy, but also for the illicit economy. Let's have a look at the evolution of the drug market in the recent months and that it's possible impact and risk for public health and also for public security and safety. Three main findings. What does it mean and what is the impact for the European citizen? First, higher availability of all drugs, but also highest purity and highest potency ever seen for the substances. This raises a lot of risks and questions regarding also the potential harm for the consumer that do not realize this important change in the potency and the likely negative healthy consequences. Large shipments are becoming the main way of conveying those drugs to the European territory. This raises concerns regarding possible infiltration by organized crime groups of the legitimate supply chain and all the economy around and the risk for corruption and money laundry and also for the increase of drug-related violence and other crime. Finally, diversification of the production is bringing a completely different picture. Increased production of cannabis, of ecstasy on the European territory and apparition of new laboratories producing new substances new synthetic opioids such as fentanyls, which raise a lot of concerns and uh, raise certainly rings the alarm. Finally, let's have a look at what has changed concerning drug use and drug-related harm. If we look at plant-based substances, we are talking about cocaine, cannabis, and heroin. We start seeing the first effect of the increased availability of cocaine 
in terms of problem use of cocaine and some increase in the demand for treatment that are caused by problematic use of cocaine. It's only a beginning. We also see and observe from some low threshold programs located in different cities in Europe, the first effect of the increased availability of crack cocaine. Cannabis has seen its concentration in THC doubling over the last decade. Those new concentrations have the potential to create more health problems, including mental health problems. But there is a second group of substances, the chemicals, the synthetic drugs. It encompasses different groups of substances, ecstasy or MDMA, amphetamines, methamphetamines, new psychoactive substances with the new synthetic opioids, for instance, new benzodiazepines, and uh, finally, we have seen in the recent years an increase in the seizures of uh, GHB, of ketamine, and of LSD. And if we look at the situation, in particular, of new psychoactive substances, we detect, through the early warning system, one new substance per week on the European market. So, those changes, this evolution, is very important because they are not giving the same profile of drug use as, if it, was, as it was 25 years ago when EMCDD started its operation. Drugs have changed. They are less visible, but they are more disseminated throughout the society. And we need to remain vigilant and continue to protect the citizens. And in terms of protection, the health consequences of drug use remain an important concern. There are some good news, some good perspectives, but there are new needs. The EU made a very strong commitment to eradicate hepatitis C. This objective cannot be reached if people who are using drugs are not covered and are not participating and associated in better testing and better interventions. And last is the evolution of drug-related death. In 2018, there were around 9,000 drug-related death cases. Most of them were associated to opiate use, frequently in combination with other substances, such as benzodiazepines. What we observe in the recent years is that there is one specific group of people who are using drugs that is suffering more from deadly overdose. It has increased in the group of 50 years old and more by 75%. This reflects that, at least for an important part, this is an aging population that continues to use opioids. There is an urgent need to provide more appropriate, better tailored treatment and support for those persons. This was the picture that uh, we wanted to share with you at the occasion of the launch of this new report. What we have learned from the pandemic is that some things can go worse, of course. But there is a fresh hope. For instance, with the creativity and innovation that has been developed and shown by many treatment programs and harm reduction services that manage to recover from the negative and disruptive effect of the measures taken to, to cope with the pandemic, and they manage to develop new ways to work in partnership, in association with people who are using drugs. For us and for the European Union, we need to continue to monitor carefully those new emerging changes to assess the possible consequences on the long term. And in particular, we need and we want to pay careful attention to what will happen in the next months. Everybody expects a very important economic recession that could increase the vulnerability of some groups in the population that are already very vulnerable. Also, there is a potential risk that because of this more challenging economic situation, we could have more people entering into drug-related, directly or indirectly, criminal activities. This shows that the approach that is developed at the EU level and the work of the MCDDA as a, as a direct impact or direct scope to give the support 
for a better, healthier and more secure Europe as far as drugs are concerned.